Hey guys. Hi, hi, it's Dr. Megan here. I'm so excited to hop on Periscope. I've been thinking of this topic and um, doing a Periscope on tending your heart for the last couple days and it works in my schedule to hop on now. So I'm letting, um, letting more people join, but first of all, who, who's joining now? Tell me where you're from. I always like to see who's on who's online and um, what's going on. So I'd love to hear where you're from. So you can type that in. And hopefully I've got comments and everything enabled. So that's always, that's always my hope. Oh, there we go. I got a hello. Hi. Hi, Atlanta. Hi, Jen. Fun, fun. Okay. So I am Dr. Megan Burt. I'll give you a little introduction of myself while some some more people are coming on. Hi, Nicole from Saskatchewan. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, I love Canada and Saskatchewan. I went to chiropractic school with a lot of people from Canada because Minnesota was pretty close. So, okay, I'm Dr. Megan Burt. I run the website um, and blog and business, meganburt.com. I am a chiropractor, I'm a natural functional medicine practitioner, I love real food, and I also have a podcast, Just Enjoy Health. So it's um, so it's really fun. Sorry, I gotta block somebody, there we go. Um, so today I wanna talk about tending your heart. So I just got a question, are you a vegan? No, I am not, I'm not even a vegetarian, but I do believe in a real food um, high quality food lifestyle, which a lot of a lot of what I teach is on grain free living or at least gluten free living, and then um, for others, other things I teach on is really just finding the right food plan and the right diet. I don't like the word diet, the right food plan for you. So let's let's jump in a little bit more. So this has been really percolating in my mind for, like I said, for a couple days. And so um, I um, wanna go through what tending is and what your heart is. So to tend is to oversee. And to tend is really caring for something. So think of this, think of tending a garden or um, tending sheep, which is which is biblical, which is why I use that. Um, just really um, looking over something, and so once again, we need to tend our hearts. So let's go a little bit more of like what I'm talking about when I'm talking about um, hearts. Yes, I agree. There's a lot of trolls on here right now. Hopefully, I'm trying to block and I'm trying to read. So that's why it sounds like I'm a little bit spacey because I'm like, I want to make sure I'm not missing anybody's comments, but I also can block comments as need be. Um, anyway, so we'll jump back in the heart. So I'm not talking about our physical heart, like, um, like the different ventricles and all of that stuff. So I'm talking about just our, our, our kind of like overall heart. So the Bible actually um, mentions the heart almost 300 times. And, um, and our hearts are actually naturally deceitful. So Jeremiah 17, nine says the heart is deceitful above all things. And so why do we have to tend to our hearts? Because we don't really understand what's going on in them and we can't always trust, uh, trust our feelings or trust our heart on different things. But guess what? God does. And I agree with you, Jen. Um, oh my goodness, yes I do. Uh, but God does, he knows what's going on in our hearts. And um, we have to know God and what he wants for our lives or what he wants for our hearts. You could say protect our hearts too. So tending or protecting, yes. So that we can tend or we can oversee our hearts in that way. So if we don't tend our hearts, we really live by what the world says or what, even just different opinions of people. You know, you should do this or you should try this or this thing's right or that thing's not right. And so we can feel like we're kind of um, going back and forth a lot and we wanna figure out what's right for us in our life. What has the Lord called us to? And this is where I wanna tie health 
into it too. I believe we have to tend our hearts in health. So like I said at the beginning, my blog and my recipes, a lot of them are gluten-free, a lot of them are grain-free because I work with a lot of people who need some more advanced healing. It's what works for my body. Um, it's what a, it's, it's a low inflammatory diet um, and eating plan, but that doesn't mean that grains are horrible. That doesn't mean that I want you to feel like I have to eat exactly like Dr. Megan does or else, well, I'm doing something wrong here. Not at all. So you have to figure out where the Lord wants you to invest in your health and what ways to do that. Because in health, we can't make one huge monumental decision um, and, and, you know, kind of go forward. Hold on one sec, you guys. There we go. Uh, and go forward and go, well, tomorrow I've switched everything in my entire life. I've taken, you know, every supplement known to man or whatever it is. I'm doing 12 detoxes at once and I'm going to be perfectly healthy because this is what everybody tells me to do. No, it's really consistent steps that are made over and over again. Um, and then really figuring out what the next layer is, what foods work. It takes time. And that's where I can't tell you, like, here's five things that you can do starting today. Some of you, yes, praying for discernment. Some of you are going to go, oh, those five things, I already do all five of them. Where other people are going to go, that is so overwhelming. Where do I start? So this isn't really specific on health. Um, but it's, you know, where I'm giving you specifics of things. But it is something where you, um, where you really, just like somebody just popped up, where you pray for discernment. You go, Lord, what do you want me to do? Um, and what do you want me to um, do next in health or the health of our family? So in our health, there's a lot that has to do with our attitudes and our emotions. Now, this is going aside from sometimes feeling discouraged in our health, which is which happens. It happens in my life. It happened on my healing journey where I'm like, what is going on here? Why am I not feeling better? I'm working so hard. Or we all get into those moments. But overall, when I'm saying our attitudes um, and our emotions behind it, health is not just a set of rules. Sometimes it can be really easy to see the, see health as a set of rules. Well, if I just do this, this, and this, well, that's what's healthy. But then another blog post says three other things, and another one says 10 things, and that, that contradicts this next thing, and it can get really confusing. And so I want to um, just encourage you guys not to get stuck in a set of rules because you think something's right. Now something can work really well for your body and you can shout that from the rooftops like this works, this helped. Um, so you know we do want to share information but don't get stuck in a set of rules. So if we're not tending our hearts this is what can happen in health. We can be scrolling on social media and I completely I had a conversation with somebody about social media today where it's not bad and it's not some, it's something that can be used well. I'm doing it right now. I'm doing a scope. You probably found me because I posted on Instagram or posted on Facebook. Um, my business is on the internet. So I like the internet and I like social media. But sometimes when we are feeling kind of icky or we're feeling a little bit restless, we jump right over to social media and we go, well, this person's life looks better. This person's healthier. This person's fitter. This person's doing this thing. And we feel like that's what we have to do to be healthy or then to be happy about our bodies or happy about our um, our health. And so it's really a lot based on our attitude. <laughs> That's why you stopped using Facebook. Exactly, it can be so hard just to do that discernment of this is really good information about health, but I can't handle this right now because for me, it's so many rules. And I unsubscribe to a lot of this is for me, even health and wellness newsletters that come through that um, are really science-based and really, um, really detailed. And as much as that's what I love to learn, I can't have that in my email the first thing in the morning. I look at it and I'm like, I'm not doing this and I'm not doing this and I'm not doing this and I must not be healthy. And then I get really overwhelmed and completely forget about all of the number one healthy choices I make throughout the day, but number two, like the progress that I made in my healing. So I don't have all of these deeper science journals and articles come into my email. If I wanna go search 
without research, then I go and I research, um, I research that. And um, if I, you know, if I need that, but I don't want it just in, in my, um, in my inbox all the time. So I try to find things, especially in social media too, where I can, I can feel like I am encouraged. Not that that is the main source of encouragement, but that, that, um, that the people that I follow are encouraging in their, in their posts and, um, in what they share versus like, oh, my body doesn't look like that. Or my food plate doesn't look like that. And I do share a lot of food photos. So never look at those and like, oh, her, that meal looks great. Sometimes I stage them because I'm a food blogger. And so I'm taking photos for the blog and then I'll take one on my iPhone too. So most of the time our food doesn't look that great on the plate. So when we, uh, when we're not tending our hearts, we can get really discouraged or really frustrated in our health. Um, and we're, and really, when we do, um, when we do tend our hearts well, then um, then we can be consistent. And that willpower, which is you know such a, a fallacy, I feel like in health, um, that thing that we want though, where we stick to something, that that comes because it's based on our attitudes. We're feeling really good about where the Lord is leading us, leading our hearts, leading us in terms of health. Um, I'm reading here. It is a struggle some days. I, I totally get that too. And it's just renewing your mind and resting in the fact that if you feel like the Lord's saying, you know, those 30 day diet plans or whatever it is, those really intense exercises that, that, you know, they have on TV, that's not for you. You need to find something that you love to do. You know, start here in terms of food, start with trying to reduce gluten. If you feel like your body's sensitive to that, so we can reduce inflammation. Don't look at something way on the other side that might be like an autoimmune paleo plan where you take out eight foods and it's really, really hard and really intense. That's not necessarily the best thing for you. So really resting in that and not letting that, um, letting it kind of bubble up like I'm not doing enough or I'm not, you know, fill in the blank, whatever it is, whatever it is for you. But when you are tending your heart, then you're gonna have more of that discernment. And um, yes, there can be definitely triggers in the past. If you've had an eating disorder or just disordered eating, I feel like as women, we, we tend to have times in our life, especially when we're younger, where we have bad relationships with food or you know bad relationships with our body and that there definitely can be really big triggers there too. Um, so tending your heart in health is gonna look like, um, not looking at what other people are doing. If they're, if they know you really well personally, or and this is a total side note, but I want to mention, or if you hire a, a doctor or a natural health coach or you know a functional medicine practitioner, whatever it is, and they know your body, they know your case, they're working with you um, in terms of your healing. You can listen to what they say because they're going to give you their, the best advice for you, customized to you, to encourage you, um, and to get you healthier. But if it's just scrolling through something on the internet or something on social media, don't be swayed by those. And you're going to be less swayed by those the more that you seek the Lord and the more that you tend your heart in health. And then you don't feel like you have to do something. So I want to share a little example um, of mine for you. So I wrote an article earlier this week and it's on um, my blog, meganbert.com. And so it's, I entitled it why I don't do CrossFit and maybe you shouldn't either. And I jokingly titled it that um, because it is a more controversial title, but I don't do CrossFit, but my husband does. And my husband is a very strong, more competitive, it's a really good workout for him. Now for me, I know when CrossFit first came out, it's really big. A lot of times in the chiropractic community, people that are doing, um, a lot of just in the health world, in the food blogging world even. And so then it, it kind of stirred up within me because this was years ago. I was like, I have to do a certain kind of exercise. It has to be super intense. It has to be at least an hour long. Yes, CrossFit was draining for your adrenals. So some people can do it. A lot of times it's, we don't do well with that. Um, 
like I said, I had to be super intense. And if I didn't get this intense workout in, then I thought that I was totally a failure. And guess what? <laughs> that doesn't mean that you're a failure. I now know for my body, and this was years ago when I was really sick. So I would do this intense workout. I would go to Lifetime. I'd do this strength class for 60 minutes and I would be fried for the next like three or four days. I would be so sore. I could barely walk. I was exhausted. I couldn't even work out for the next four days. So I'd work out like once, maybe twice a week, all because of the super intense workout that I hated throughout the whole time. I was hating it. I didn't like it. And some people, they're like, oh, I love those classes. What I have learned um, for my body is that I like things that are more mind-body connected. Yoga, Pilates, um, I love bar. So I do Suzanne Bowen and shes I think she's amazing. I do her prenatal videos right now. If you look at it, it doesn't look like it's super intense, but it's something that, like you said, I'm doing what I love, not what I'm punishing my body to. So you can head over, oh, hot yoga. I can't do it right now being pregnant, but I do, I do love yoga. Not as hot though, <laughs> uh, but find what you love doing and then rest in that. Rest in the fact that even though when I do my bar workouts, I don't get like super sweaty and you know, like going to the gym or doing CrossFit might do, but my legs are burning. I'm sore the next day. It's something that like I feel recharged afterwards and it's a really good thing versus feeling like I just totally tanked myself because somebody told me that I need to do this type of workout to be good. So that's my example. And you can go read um, on my website. Like I said, I go through the physical, the, the emotional and the spiritual portions of kind of what fuels you in a workout and it just explains a little bit more in there too. So when we're tending our heart, we're really being in tune with what works for our bodies, which means you're getting healthier and you're making consistent choices and you're finding foods you love and you're finding exercise you love. And it can be a really encouraging thing versus something that's super discouraging. Now, changing your diet and changing your exercise or getting into some new habits can be hard, but it shouldn't be something that you hate because somebody else is telling you that you have to do it. It should be something that you are wanting to learn and you're wanting to gain a lot of knowledge in and that there's some, um, there's some good wisdom behind that too. So if we don't tend our gardens, this is just going back into tending. If we don't tend our gardens, we know we get a lot of weeds and we don't bear the fruit that we want in our lives. And we really tend our hearts. We're weeding out our hearts and we're tending the fruit in our health that we want. So an untended heart's going to be more full of comparison and discouragement and frustration. But when you're tending your heart and you're really seeking what God wants and what that looks like for you, then there's a lot of fruit. There's a lot of peace in that and there's a lot of joy in that too. So I just want to thank you guys for hopping on with me. If you have any questions, type them in. I tried to read as you guys were popping them up and then I could block people too that weren't supposed to be on here. But if you do have um, any questions, let me know now. If you have other questions for me, you can always contact me on my blog, meganbert.com, or you can send me an email too. I would um, love to hear from you. So my email is askdrmegan at gmail.com. So A-S-K-D-R-M-E-G-H-A-N. So I have an H in my Megan. So, oh, I'm so glad you guys were encouraged. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, I plan on hopping on Periscope again later this week. So you guys have a wonderful night. I know I'm catching a right around dinner time. So enjoy your dinner. Enjoy whatever you're eating. And we'll talk soon. Bye.